The International Criminal Court was set up in 2002 as a last resort to try criminals and perpetrators of genocide never tried at home. Since then, the ICC has opened inquiries for nine nations, all but one of them African. The results have been mixed. The first successful conviction of a war criminal by the ICC was Congolese warlord Thomas Lubangadielo. He was sentenced in 2012 to 14 years in prison. More recently, the case against Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta and Deputy President William Ruto failed. They'd been accused of allegedly masterminding deadly post-election violence in 2007 to 2008. The African Union has accused the ICC of unfairly targeting Africans. And in February, members backed a Kenyan proposal to push for withdrawal. Together, we can make a powerful statement that reflects our refusal to be carried along in a vehicle that has strayed off course to the detriment of our sovereignty, security and dignity as Africans. The following month, South Africa and Uganda refused to apprehend Sudan's President Omar al-Bashir during his visits. He's wanted by the ICC for war crimes in Darfur. The AU has proposed to expand the jurisdiction of the African Court of Human and People's Rights to include international crimes. This week, Burundi threatened to reconsider its ICC membership following the launch of preliminary investigations into post-election killings in the country. Burundi says its own courts should have priority to investigate. Clementine Logan, CCTV. Well, let's get more on this development now. Jack Parrock is joining me live from Brussels. Jack, uh, Pierre Bemba's lawyers have stated that they will appeal that uh, conviction. It is likely to be quite a long battle. What should we expect here? Well, indeed. So the defence of Jean-Pierre Bemba have come out it, it, just ahead of his sentencing, saying that they will appeal the, uh, the, his conviction and they will try and say that the, that the whole trial was a mistrial that they essentially say that evidence was used in the wrong way, misinterpreted by judges. Although it's timely that the defence have done this, I think it's pretty clear, and it wasn't unexpected uh, that he would appeal this case. But when Jermaine Katanga uh, was convicted, he tried to, at the International Criminal Court, he tried to appeal, and that appeal really didn't work. Now, the prosecution say that they're pushing for the longest sentence possible. They want uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Bemba to be given 25 years in prison uh, following uh, during his sentencing today uh, and we'll hear about the sentencing will begin in around uh, just over an hour from now so we're waiting to hear what uh, sentence they give and then we'll have to see the process of the appeal and the call for a mistrial and how that pans out in the wake of the sentencing and of course jack the the lawyers there have said that uh, the trial had a lot of errors what would a mistrial though mean for the international criminal court coming uh, so soon after the collapse of the kenyan cases well, I think it's important to note that this uh, conviction has gone down now. Jean-Pierre Bemba is convicted of war five counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity, specifically as well, which was a new thing for the International Criminal Court, that he was convicted of uh, sexual-based crimes, allowing the soldiers that he sent into the Central African Republic, allegedly, well, that's what the ICC says, uh, that he, he allowed them to commit sexual-based crimes against uh, women, etc., in, in the CAR. So for the NGOs, it's really important. But for the ICC, these convictions are incredibly important. As we heard uh, in the report just, just before, uh, the, the case against Uhuru Kenyatta, the Kenyan president and deputy president William Ruto, fell apart. Uh, that was considered a really major, major loss for the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. And securing these convictions, getting sentences uh, carried out, is really important for the ICC to hold down its position in uh, international transitional justice. Um, uh, although we hear from uh, Bemba's defence lawyers that they will appeal, I think following sentencing and conviction and the amount of time and effort that's been put into this case, it was considered a pretty watertight case by observers and experts that convicted Jean-Pierre Bemba. I think the success uh, of an appeal will be in question, in fact. Right. Jack Parrock for us there in Brussels.